couple of weeks ago uh, I did a series of videos on how I rewound my magneto um, and how I rebuilt it and did some cosmetic repairs and made a test rig. Um, I'll just what I'm what I'm going to do in this video is I'm making a cam ring for the magneto and uh, I mentioned at the at the end of my last video that I'd probably show you how I did it on my budget milling machine. Now. I've just mentioned the other videos. These are the other videos if you need to catch up on them. Uh, th this series is how I rewound an armature and I made a coil winder for my Myford lathe and a vacuum chamber to do the armature. And it's something I've never done before. Um, so you might find that interesting to catch up. And then another four parts after that I've shown you how I how I did a cosmetic repair on the casting, how I rebuilt it and how I made a test rig for my Harrison lathe and how I tested the armature. Uh, that's that series of videos. Now this this little series is probably going to be maybe two or three parts. I'll split it in two. And it's how I made a cam ring. Uh, this is my Lucas Magneto that I rewound and there was a part missing in this Magneto and it was this cam ring that fits in the points if you can see that uh, so that's where the points fit and that's where the cam ring fits now what I did I made a, I made a new cam ring and I have tried this cam ring that I made in, in my original Magneto on my original motorbike and it works perfect so I was just going to do a little video on uh, how, how I did this in my budget budget milling machine with with fairly limited uh, equipment really um, just a second so what, what I'll do to start with I'll show you how I find out how I managed to find out the sizes. Now I've not got a Lucas drawing or anything like that. I've had to do it by using my original cam ring off my motorbike, which is an original Lucas cam ring. I know it may be slightly warm because it's had a few years in motorbike, but uh, I think it's pretty accurate because when I set timing up, it's it, it's, it seems to be fairly accurate on both both its lobes so what I've done I've made a fixture in my Myford lathe and that's where we are at the moment we're over at, over at the lathe I'll just show you this in a minute I've made a fixture so I could calculate all these angles where these where these lobes fit in relationship to these slots now this slot here is is the peg of in the magneto and uh, the the width of this slot works in coordination with this groove inside to get your advance and retard. So these lobes on this cam have got to be made precisely to the de to the degree and to the thou thousandth of an inch. So. Uh, when it's in the mo when it's in the magneto. As the, as the points are going around with the armature, exactly when the magnetic flux on the armature collapses, that's when that straight away after that, that's when the points need to be opening to get your your maximum voltage. Apparently, now I've done a crash course on magnetos this last few weeks. It's not something I'm an expert on, but it's just something I've I've learned and and how I've rewound it and tested it and made this cam so what I did then to get to get this complicated system here with all these angles and all these sizes I'll just move drawing for a second I've made this fixture for my Myford lathe now what it consists of is a it, it's really imitating my magneto I've put I've got this this fixture in lathe and there's a I've put a peg in bottom so it mimics the magneto peg and what happens is 
my original cam ring off my motorbike fits into this fixture like so just got to get lined up and then that slot you turn that slot fully clockwise so it's in the advanced position right there and I'm just going to move camera slightly to show you how I'm going to do this let me set up so there's my blank what not my blank there's me me uh, cameraing from my motorbike in this fixture there's the peg and it's set at full advance now I've set I'll set my lathe exactly in um, vertical position to that to center line of that peg and what I've done I've, I've fitted in my lathe um, a, de a degree disc at the back here and I've made this pointer so I can get uh, get an exact reading now when this fixture in my lathe is set it uh, at the vertical position I've set my degree disc to zero at that position so from that point on I can get all my, my degrees of where these cam lobes are, are, are moving my clock in my lathe, my indicator so how I did it my clock goes into, into just bear with me because I'm doing this free hand with camera my clock goes into this uh, cam ring and then I determine where all these lobes are, com uh, are coming into play and coming out of play in relationship to them grooves so that's how and it's took me it's, to be honest it's took me quite a while to get this right because it's, it's, it's a bit intricate and like I said I've not got no drawings to work to I'm just working from, from an original cam ring so I'll just put this back camera back on the stand so I'm not wobbling about so much uh, I'll just bring the drawing back so just reset this camera so basically to start with I've I've made a blank ring and it's the the outside diameter is 1.1.875 inch and seven eighths then I've I've bored the ring out to the cam lobe diameter which is 1.575 uh, then I've put that uh, I'll just show you on cam ring And I've put this um, counter bore in. If you can see that, I don't know if I've got camera right. I've put this counter bore in. Um, and that counter bore is the size of the diameter for the clearance of the lobes 1.655 diameter. And the the width is um, let me get this right twenty one thirty seconds wide the width so I've made me blank and what what I, what I shall be doing in part two of this shall show you how I milled it on my budget miller and what what you've got to do you've got to get these cam lobes in the right position to where this slot is otherwise you don't get the uh, your points opening at the correct time where magnetic flux collapses so what I've done then I've explained I've made this blank and the inside diameter of the lobe is there so we've got a blank now that diameter now I put it in my lathe uh, 
sorry I'll put it in my milling machine now I'll set it up in miller and what we've got to do just a second right what we've got to do then in milling machine because this this is not a straightforward um, radius here you've got to do you've got to machine this in four in in four positions well six positions really but I'll just explain how I'm going to do it um, to get these cam lobes at the, these degrees of, for, for opening and closing the points I've worked these angles out and I think I'm, I'm as near as damn it as, as, as could be to probably a Lucas drawing I'm not going to say I'll be exactly right but it's working in my bike fine so I'm, I'm not far off so I'm going to set this up now in my milling machine on my rotary table and you can do it on a rotary table uh, or by using coordinates and what, what we're going to do is I'm going to set my boring bar to 0.63 radius which this, which this is here if you can see and I'll show you how I did that and then we're going to I'm going to cut f four four cuts in this ring take that material out move over on my co coordinates take this side out and so on on four put four points and what that leaves you is this little bit in the middle so then you, all you have to do is bring your, your, your spindle back to the centre and instead of using this these coordinates here of 0 0.096 and 0 0.173 will be using this radius size 0.1975 to move over to mill that centre bit out on both sides so I'll just take you over to the milling machine now and explain uh, explain where I'm up to on the miller right I'm over on the milling machine now and I'll just I'll just show you my milling machine it, it, it's only a budget milling machine and it's it's fairly old uh, it, I can produce accurate work on it, but but there's a a couple of methods you have to use to do to get that accurate work. I'm not relying on my dials no more because obviously it, it's an old machine and screws are probably worn. So what I've done, I've fitted a vernier caliper to my quill, just a standard vernier vernier caliper. I fitted the same vernier caliper down to me uh, x-axis. I was going to fit one on Y axis but I've not got around to that and what I do for accurate work and intricate work I just use a clock gauge to get me my um, Y positions <clears throat> so I've set I've set my chuck up on my homemade rotary table that's another project for you and uh, what where I'm up to now I'm just going to put camera back down. Where I'm up to is I've just set my blank up in in this chuck on rotary table. I know you can't see my clock from there, but I don't know if you can see it on that side. I've set this up now, and I'm I'm within half a half a thou concentricity. So my spindle is set in centre of this bar now. Now what I shall do now, I'll take my clock out. Oh, I've set I've set my degrees to zero on my rotary table, and I'm not going to be using my rotary table as such to to get that material out. I'm going to be doing it using coordinates. So now I've got I've got to put my boring bar in, and I've got to set my boring bar tool to exactly 0 0.630 radius. Now this this is just a basic boring head, uh, so obviously it has got increments on this dial here, but it it's not accurate. You can't you can't. It's too small to get any accuracy. So what I'm doing, I've made this uh, this ring this uh, ring to set me boring head up. And what what this ring consists of? It's just a diameter that slides into the internal diameter of me 
me uh, ring that I'm machining that slides into there and this bore is exactly um, 1.260 diameter well it's not exactly it's 0.1.1622 diameter because what I shall be doing I use a tool file feeler gauge put my tool into this bore and then I set me I set me uh, radius of, of my boring head to this bore using a two thou feeler gauge. So once I've got that feeler gauge just rubbing on my tool, I know my radius of my tools then set to uh, 0 0.630 radius. That's in, in we're working in Imperial system now. So that's 0 0.630. That's one point. 2.60 diameter. Then what I shall be doing then, I've worked my coordinates out via a bit of trigonometry, if you can see on my drawing here. And what I shall be doing then is, um, I shall be moving over. So we're working on on, on this centre here. I shall be moving over 96 thousandths on the y-axis using my dial test indicator at the back here and I shall be moving to the right 173 thousandths on my x-axis to get my position here to get that position to machine this to machine this out here if you can see that that's me making me cutter. So what I shall do then, I shall I shall cut that cut that out and get the exact diameter that I need. Move over my coordinates back to this point, cut this one and so on. Move to that point, cut this one, move to that point, cut that one. And that will leave me a little bit bit of material in the middle. There, left in. If you can see where it radius at cutter's gonna go. I need three hands here, just a second. So it's going to leave that little bit of material in. So what I shall do then, I'll set my spindle back to it, back to centre at job, and instead of moving over 173 thousandths, I shall be moving over 0.1975, which is the radius here. And once I've got that set there at what at one nine seven five, I can then cut this out on, and the same on the other side. So that's where I'm up to at the moment. Uh, I shall continue this in part two when I've got all my uh, my tool set, my my cutter ready. So. I think I've covered everything there, and I hope I've explained it properly, but I'll go through it all again as I'm machining the part. So, anyway, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll catch you in part two as soon as I can.